So I'm going to run through a quick example of dynamic binding in this video. So what I'm going to do is first I'm going to create a I'm going to create a uh, generic class shape. Okay. And in order to keep this simple, I'm going to just basically, um, you know what, actually, let's go ahead and make this abstract. And let's put in an abstract math method public abstract double compute area. Okay. So go ahead and compile this. Um, all right. So there's my shape object. All right. Now I'm going to. Uh, let's make a public class uh, circle extends shape. All right, I am going to make a uh, private int radius. Uh, we'll make a constructor for the circle. Um, radius. R. And because we're extending shape, now we need to provide an implementation for this compute area method. So let's go ahead and do that. So we'll do public double compute area. Uh, and uh, we will return math.pi times radius times radius. Okay. So now we have a circle object. Okay. And let's go ahead and make one other object. Let's go ahead and make a square object. So we'll do public class square extends shape. Uh, we'll have private, uh, so we'll do a side length, okay, and we'll make a constructor, int s, uh, side length equals s, and let's see, I guess because we're extending shape, we need to provide an implementation of compute area. Okay, so in this case, we will return side length times four, right? So it's side length, sorry, side length times side length. Need to make sure I remember my math. Okay, so that's the area of a square, okay? So I should be able to compile and run this, or compile it at any rate. All right, and that works. So now I'm going to go ahead and create an implementation class. So we'll do public class people. public static void main string args. All right, so here's what I'm going to do. I am going to create an array of shape items. Shape uh, I'll just call it shapes equals new shape, and it will have space to hold, um, let's say, five objects. Okay. Shapes sub zero equals new circle 10. Shapes sub one equals new square 10. Shapes sub two equals new circle. Uh, five shape sub three equals new circle 20 and shape sub four equals new square um, seven. Okay, so now that I have this array of shapes full, filled with various different types of things, okay, I can write a loop that will do It'll just go through this array. 
shape star length plus plus. And I'll just do system.out.println. And we're going to do shapes i dot compute area. Okay. So basically what's happening is, is, is it goes through the array. It's going to say, all right, this first one is a circle. So I'm going to call circles compute area. Okay. The next time through the array, it's a square. So I'm going to call squares compute area. The third time through, it's going to be circles compute area again. And so that's basically how this should work. Okay. So... All right, that compiles. And if I run it, you'll see there are my computations. Okay, so the area of that circle is 314, so that's pi times 100. The second one is 10 times 10. The third one is, five, is 25 times pi, so that's where that comes from. The fourth one, circle 20, is going to be uh, 20 times 20, which is 400 times pi, so that's the 1256. And then the square, 7. So compute area, the Java compiler was able to figure out that as I go through this array, I'm going to call the correct compute area for whatever type of object that I have. So if it's a circle, I'm going to call circles compute area. And that's the pi r squared. And if I have a square, then I'm going to call squares compute area. Okay. So this right here is what we mean by dynamic binding. Okay. At runtime, Java figures out uh, which method to call based on the actual object that is being uh, used.